Hey guys, so I am starting this piece over here and I am gonna just bring you along for the process. So I have given this a base coat of, I mixed pumpkin spice and Florida orange from Dixie Belle Paint Company. And now I'm gonna go over it with a wash. So I'm using Peony, which is like a really bright pink from Dixie Belle. And I am just gonna go ahead and show you this first step here, um, right here so that you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing as we go through the tutorial of this piece. So I'm finally feeling inspired to do it. So I kind of work in phases. So I'm not exactly sure what direction this piece is gonna go, but I'm thinking I want to go blue, pink, and I'm gonna be using my own transfer on it. So let's just keep going with it. So all I'm doing, this base coat is really dry. It's been dry for gosh, a couple weeks now. And I am just taking my paint and applying it and just kind of spreading it really thin with water, giving it a watercolor coverage. So I'm just gonna do this little spot here for you right now, and then we'll go into, I'm gonna let it dry overnight, and then we'll go into more depth on it, hopefully tomorrow. This is a piece I will be working on over some time and just kind of working um, as I pull inspiration, but I really am pulling the inspiration from my new transfer that is coming out in about a month. So I figured I would start recording some of the process of it. Um, as an artist, I work when I'm inspired. So I'm inspired right now and that's where we're at. So I just wet the paint, I just wet the piece and then I just kind of push the paint around with the water. Really, really easy. A really simple technique, but very effective. I'm just gonna go ahead and go through and finish this entire piece. Hey guys, so we're back for the second part of the wash. I am gonna go over this again, the same way I did with the peony, except this time I'm gonna use the golf. So I'm just gonna show you how I'm doing it on this side panel here. I'm wetting my paint and then I'm dipping my brush in my uh, the golf. And then I'm just gonna push this paint around and use a lot of water to create a watercolor effect. So I kind of want to make sure I'm spraying my details so that that color drips out and I can still see all of the color underneath. I'm gonna take a paper towel and just dab some of this paint away in the areas where I want a little bit more pink showing. Just kind of wipe it back a little bit, a little bit too much golf on here. I'm gonna straighten my lines. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process over the entire piece again. Hey guys, we're gonna continue working on our piece. So I have a little bit of daisy here. I'm gonna go ahead, I have a dry brush and I'm gonna dry brush this on. Now I kind of have the watercolor look that I'm going for. After I do this part, I'm gonna clear coat over it. So I'm gonna leave some of my yellow pretty predominant. So that's my goal here. So I don't know if I'm gonna mix with water first or not. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go over it, maybe a little water just to move it. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of go over some of my raised details with this yellow color because my transfer has yellow in it. All right, 
so I'm gonna continue adding yellow. I'm kind of going for a varied look, so I'm leaving this corner here alone. Um, you know, some of this alone, a little heavier on the yellow here, but I'm just gonna keep working the yellow in the same way I did with the other paint. Um, pretty much exactly the same, except I think I'm gonna use a little less water and kind of have that predominant color coming up. My plan is to clear coat it next. I'll spray it with a clear coat and then I'm gonna go over it with black wax or a glaze. So I just applied the transfer that I designed and created to a piece of furniture for the first time right there. And here's the rest of it. It's gonna go on. Okay, so I have cut up a bunch of pieces of this transfer and I'm gonna go ahead and apply them on this piece, kind of like I did here. Um, you just place them on and rub them and they apply. This over here is the full transfer so that you can see it. Um, that is the full transfer. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it where I think it'll look good on this piece. Here we go. Let's get to the tutorial based content of this live. Um, and we're gonna just, we're gonna make this kind of pop. So kind of imagine what it looks like now. I've already photographed it. I've actually already photographed this piece mostly for, for social media and for sale. Everything that I'm gonna do here, I am gonna to wanna to seal it again. Now it's really easy for me to seal because I spray seal, okay? So I will use a sprayer to seal this piece. And um, I find that when I use Dixie Dirt, I really want to, like, you don't have to, but I use so much of it, I usually like to seal it a little bit more. I'm gonna use um, Besting Wax in Black because I feel like that is the best way to go about getting this to kind of pop. So my goal, I want to get these edges to pop more and I want it to look just a little more shaded. Through here, I think I might add some gold gilding wax, we'll see. But I'm just gonna go ahead and add my black wax and then I'm probably gonna put um, a Dixie Dirt on top of that. I'm gonna get a wipe ready, just in case. So I'm using a like stiff, just like a stiff bristle brush. Um, a lot of times I'll just take a chip brush and cut it like this, but I was already using these, so I'm just gonna keep using these. So I'm just gonna go ahead And I'm gonna just push this in the corners. And this is gonna start, you're gonna start seeing those colors become um, a little bit brighter as we do this. They're gonna seem to be a little bit brighter. And I'm gonna age this piece so it's not so feminine and sweet. I want to really, um, I'm really attracted to darker colors. So I much prefer to use like black wax as opposed to white wax or anything like that. Okay, so that was really easy. I just pretty much, all I did was I just traced it out. I'm gonna take a shot or um, these are just, what do you call them? Shop rag. I'm gonna take a shop rag. I'm just gonna wipe it back, okay? So nothing too game changing. But, the, and this is a technique that works really good with even just one color. Like, let's say I just painted this blue. Adding wax like this really makes a difference. It really makes your details pop. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe it back. I'm gonna go ahead and come in here on these parts too. I actually think I did these parts already, but I'm just gonna kinda, I see I just want a little bit more, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my dark wax on here. And I have sprayed this with uh, clear coat. So my wax is really easy to use. That is really important. So if you didn't, I haven't said that yet, but I have sprayed this with a clear coat before I even put my transfer on, which is not necessarily necessary usually. I, um, Usually I put the transfer on and then I spray the clear coat, but since I was gonna be using these finishing products, and because this has taken me three months, I sprayed clear coat over it. So you're gonna see, you see those like details just kind of come out a little bit more, and I'm just gonna kind of rub them in. And then we're gonna use the dirt. Now the, like through here, I kind of wanna leave this because I like the brightness that this has, but I, I wanna leave 
leave it towards the middle, but I want to darken just my edges. So I'm going to just kind of come in here and I'm just going to get in the corners where the dirt would naturally build up. And then through here, I still want to see the blue and the pink and the purple and the yellow coming through here. Probably not purple. Pink and purple just kind of come up with my mouth together, I guess. I'm going to add just a little bit of dark wax and I'm just really going to lightly wipe it back. And then this is where we're really going to make a difference. I'm just going to go ahead and take my clear wax and um, I'm going to actually go over this a little bit and I'm not going to wipe this back. This is going to be where my Dixie dirt is going to, is going to kind of come. So I'm going to come in circular motions in my corner. Okay. And this is just a stiff bristle brush. Um, and I'm just going to come in my corners right through here and I'm going to over compensate for what I actually want because I am going to wipe it back. So I'm going to pull it out a little further. Like I, I really only want it tucked back to here, but I'm going to pull it out about a, almost like a half inch further than I want it. And through here, I feel like I just need more through here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and you can, you can use waxes and finishing products over your transfer. All right, so we're gonna overcompensate our wax right here. And I'm actually gonna pull some of this clear wax in at the bottom to just show a little more shading down here as well. And then we're gonna get out the dirt. The dirt is gonna be, the dirt is magic, you guys. Um, Dixie Dirt's one of my favorite products that I think is like the underdog, kind of like we never see Dixie Dirt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it and then I'm just gonna I'm going to use my thumb. I'm going to use my fingers to to uh, to organic to make to make it more of an organic fall with the dirt. Now you haven't seen the dirt yet. This wax is clear. You haven't seen any of it yet, and I need to actually do it before it dries. It's already probably starting to dry. And then I can add more. Okay, the dirt. Let's talk about dirt. Dirt comes in three colors: earth ash and charcoal. I use charcoal 90% of the time. All right, so we're going to add the dirt. So I just like to use a chip brush. And it's dirty, you guys, like it's going to make a mess, but this is really what's going to um, help highlight and it's going to make our center glow. It's going to make everything glow. These colors, it's so funny because in a technique like this, there's so many colors that you don't like you're, you're, you're covering up. You almost feel like you're covering up your work that you just did, but really it, it all builds on each other and it creates that gorgeous layered look that, um, we're so attracted to. This piece is just so stinking boho. I don't think I put any clear wax there. All right, so I applied my dirt. I'm gonna add a little bit more in the spots that I feel like I need it. So this is just clear wax. I'm gonna apply it right here. I'm gonna apply it in here. I'm gonna see if, if I don't like it, I can take it off with, um, if, if you don't like it, you could just wipe it off or you could use clear wax to wipe it off or wipe it back. There. Okay, okay, I'm excited to use, I did put gold gilding wax in here. This is one of those pieces where, I, I mean, the techniques are easy. I'm not really doing anything. Like, it looks complicated, but I'm really not doing anything. There's not that many colors and there's not that many steps. It's just very time consuming. So remember that. If this looks complicated to you, um, it's just time consuming and it just, it's just kind of, just kind of like 
taking your time with it. A piece like this usually takes me a little bit more time than other pieces, because it's just super detailed. I've been working on it for several months in the background, just here and there, and I can finally show it to you because it has the transfer on it. So one of the tips I would give you with, the, with working with the dirt is to brush it on and then use your finger to make it so it falls more organically. When you put the dirt on, it's going to stick where the wax is. That's the goal. A lot of times I will use like the darker waxes um, just because I think that they work better together and I may start doing that, but Right now, I'm just using this here. Sometimes I use the darker wax too, just so I, I can like know where I even put it because it's hard to see. And at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it off the other parts of my project. So I'm not wasting. I've had that jar for a long time and I use this, I actually use dirt quite a bit. The other thing I like to do when I'm using the dirt um, is a lot of times I just like to kind of like rub it in in other spots just to kind of dirty it up a bit. It's on. Now what I'm gonna do, you can see it's blotchy, blotchy. I'm trying to see as well as you blotchy. You see how blotchy it is? Um, we're gonna wipe it back. So I'm gonna just use my shop towel again. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just brush my Dixie dirt at the bottom here into this jar back into my jar. This stuff is super messy. And don't worry about it when it falls on your other project, other parts of your project, if you have it sealed. I highly recommend that you seal your project with a clear coat before you apply Dixie Dirt. You don't have to, but I recommend that you Now we're just gonna rub it. Okay, we're gonna like rub some of it off. And you're gonna see that since I have that clear coat underneath, it's gonna rub off really easy. If I didn't have the clear coat underneath, what would happen is, it would rub into the paint because because chalk mineral paint is porous. It's super porous, so it would like it it's, it wants to suck everything up. So that's why um, that's why your first coat goes on so much smoother because it's not it doesn't have anything to like it's not porous yet. So like your second coat always takes you longer because it's porous and it takes more paint because it's sucking itself up. So remember, if you can just remember that your chalk paint is porous when you're doing projects like these, that's going to help you out a lot. And just think of like the characteristics of something that's porous. So I'm not going to wipe it back too much because honestly I, I like the way it felt. I'm just wiping it back enough to give it an organic look. Okay? I'm not trying to take it off, but I wanted to have an organic look. That looks way more organic. Up here, I need to just rub this in a little bit. I want to show you my mistake right here. Do you see? Do you see how that just it's that I don't like. Um, I like that kind of stuff a lot of times, but there I'm like hey, that doesn't look right. So I'm going to use black wax, and I'm just going to kind of shave this corner in a little more, and I'm going to hide my mistake. Some of the best parts of my pieces are just hiding parts that I, I feel are a mistake. So I'm just going to go ahead and add black wax. And then I'm going to add some dirt here. And that definitely camouflaged that a lot better. Okay, over here too. Um, actually, I think I like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since the camera's right here, I'm going to pull gold gilding wax through here so that you can see that as well. Um, okay. 
So with, when I'm using building wax, there's a couple things to remember. Oil removes oil. So if you're using gilding wax um, and you're nervous about it, have some Big Mama's butter ready. I also like to just keep a wipe because sometimes a wipe's easier. So right here on this line, I'm going to apply my gilding wax just like this. I'm going to kind of go quick. And I'm not looking for a solid gold line, okay? That's all. I'm going to smooth it with my finger. Same thing right here. I just kind of want to So now I'm just kind of touching the edges with the gilding wax. All right, we're just going to go ahead. All right, here I kind of want to use my fingers. So what I'll do is I use my hand as my palette a lot. Um and I'm just going to go ahead and just gild this edge here. I love the way that looks. Through here, I want to add a little shine. So when I'm looking at it, and I'm actually I'm using a ring light, I'm thinking the light really hits like right here. So that's where I want to put my gold gilding wax. I kind of just want to put a little right here. And then I know that that eyeball is going to look right there because it's kind of, it's between these, it's like right in between these two where that light would actually hit. I'm just going to go ahead and pull my gilding wax right through here. I had used the old um, green patina gilding wax, which you may be able to find only at a Dixieville retailer because the website doesn't have them anymore. Um, but I love that stuff. It's uh, the old green patina gilding wax. And some retailers still have them. Some retailers still have them. Um, and you can kind of see it kind of has like a pretty little like patina green look right there. Pretty much it. Um, I think that's that's pretty well detailed, you guys. The more detail work, the longer it takes, but I am really happy with it. Um, okay, I'm gonna go over all of the products I used before we get off here. Um, so I started with a base coat. I actually started with a base coat of Boss. Okay, I usually always use Boss. This piece is 100 years old. Um, I start with a base coat of Boss. And then I used, I used terracotta, pumpkin spice, and Florida orange. I threw three oranges together, um, mixed them up, put them in my sprayer, and I sprayed it. I usually, I spray my base coats. So I did that. Um, I want you guys to know too that I always say I use a sprayer. I hand painted everything for three years. Three years, I hand did every single thing and I would paint at least six pieces a month for three years, I hand painted everything. Um, and I finally got a sprayer. So it's it's easy to do by hand too. So when I say spray, you could just, you just use your brush and do that. And then I did a watered down coat with a brush, okay? And I did a watered down coat of peony and I was like this, like loose hand, dragging my brush, doing this, wiping it away in certain areas, letting it stay in others. So super loosey goosey and like random. Then I let that dry. And then I did the same exact thing with the golf. And then it was like, oh my gosh, it's so bright. And then I used Rebel Yellow. I'm pretty sure it was Rebel Yellow, one of the yellows. Uh, and then that's where you see this little, these little bits of yellow. Same thing, wiped it back. Then I gave it a coat of clear coat because I wanted to do these um, finishing products that we did here tonight. And then I applied my transfer. When it came in, I applied my transfer. This is this is a finishing pad from the Dixie Bell website. I just rub it down and burnish it. That just kind of takes off, like I make sure that it's adhered down, but that makes sure that it's like sealed well and all of your edges are not, like there's no like extra glue or anything like that. Burnishing is your front. After that, I did everything we did tonight, which was apply black wax, then we used clear wax to apply Dixie Dirt, and then I used gold gilding wax. Um, that's it, that's all I did. That's the front, I'm really proud of her. She turned out pretty darn good, so um, thank you guys for joining me, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for letting me show you my new transfer. I cannot wait to see what you guys create with it. So